We have seven new features coming to Elementor and Elementor Pro this year. And of course, I'm going to be doing a speed test just so we can check the speed of these updates. I'll tell you, don't expect too much improvement uh, speed update wise. I don't want to spoil the surprise. I'll get to that in this video. Of course, before I do an Elementor video, I have to pull out my Elementor artifact. I was given this when I visited the Elementor headquarters about a year ago. So we'll just place that right there next to Dr. Evil. Let's go ahead and take a look at these. Now, I'm going to go through them really quick because I don't want to waste anybody's time. Now, some of these are for the free version of Elementor and some are the pro version of Elementor. And I'll make sure that I make it crystal clear what is free and what is pro just so everybody knows. Let's get started. Let me reiterate. These are beta right now. So we're not going to be seeing these for maybe a month or so, but it's good to know what's coming. So the very first thing out of these seven is landing pages and who asked for landing pages no one asked for landing pages but they're now there and i don't know why they put those i could only think that they're adding landing pages because they want to make sure people understand that you can build landing pages with this tool so this is actually very simple so what's going to end up happening and this is going to be in the free version of elementor by the way just want to make that clear you'll go to right here where it says templates and there's going to be a new option here that says landing pages and you can click on add new landing page go ahead and make your landing page and it will load up exactly like normal Elementor does so it looks like we have maybe a couple landing pages here let's go ahead and insert one of these landing pages so typically your landing page will have a direct URL to it and it will literally just appear like a normal page or post on your website so let me go ahead and click on publish for this and then let's go ahead and get out of here into the dashboard. And so here is the slug. I can go ahead and change that. And so I put in a new name and I'll edit the little bit of a slug here. And that will be the direct link to it. And then I will go ahead. Oops, looks like my permalinks aren't that great anyway on this site. With the magic of editing, I just fixed that. And then here's the direct link to my landing page and I can click right there and boom shakalaka, I've got my new landing page. I guess this is more just to keep things separate and organized to keep the landing pages outside of pages on your website. So I guess it kind of makes sense in that regard. Now, the second improvement is for Elementor Pro and it's enhancements to the advanced headline widget that has always been there in Elementor Pro, but they just added additional customization options. So let's take a quick look at that. So here is my homepage. I'll go ahead and jump inside of the Elementor editor. So now let's go ahead and do a search for it. It's not advanced heading, it's animated headline. So let's go ahead and start typing animated headline. And there it is. And we'll just drag and drop that in. Now, animated headline is, I actually use this on my website. It allows you to do something animated to a certain portion of the text that's there. So you have a style and this is the highlighted or the rotating. Highlighted is what's circling, circling the word and then there's rotating. So apparently on this, we just have some additional customization styling options as far as the loop. So you can see right here, we have the loop and we always had the loop, but now we have the ability to set the duration and the delay and things like that, as well as we're able here for the style to specify the different colors of it as well. So there's just some uh, improvements here, nothing earth shattering. Now the third improvement is accessibility improvements. This is going to be in obviously the free version and it's very hard to demonstrate, uh, but accessibility is super crucial for websites, especially website builders, and they've made some improvements to that. I'm not able to demonstrate it, but it's in the free and the pro, obviously. Now, the fourth improvement is a brand new widget called the code highlight widget. Let me show you this in action. OK, so I'm back on my home page. Let me find a little sweet spot to drop it. Uh, maybe I'll just drop a little bit of code right on there. So in the search widgets, we can start typing in the word code like that. And it's right here. It's called code highlight. And this is going to be uh, make it really easy to add a snippet of code to your website that you not that you're running and using on your website, but that you want to give away. And for me, I tend to give little snippets of code away in blog posts all the time and tutorials and things of that nature. And this would make that easy. 
So right here, you would first choose the language. Now, this doesn't really change much of the code input box. It'll just add additional options down here. So let me show you. So I've entered in, this is my code. And you can see I have my options here. But if I change the language from JavaScript to CSS, all it did is it added an additional option here that I may or may not want to use. And it was inline color. So you see how the word code turned to red? Watch when I change this back to JavaScript, that goes away. So it's up to you uh, with that. It's just good to know that that's there. Now there's a neat feature here, which is copy to clipboard. So when I hover over, you could see it's very faint, but on the far right, it says copy. And so I can click that one button and it would copy the code snippet into my clipboard. What's also nice is there's themes here. So I can choose a dark theme and actually that looks uh, really tasty. Uh, but then there's all kinds of different uh, styles that you can apply here. I do like the variety here as well. So uh, this is the code highlight widget, which is brand new to Elementor Pro. So just to clarify that again, that new widget is for Elementor Pro. Now this next one, I think is great and I'm glad they added and I think all web creators are going to get a lot out of this and this happens to be our fifth improvement and it's for Elementor Pro only. However, I think they should add it to the free version. We'll see when it eventually comes out. And this is the ability to add custom code that would be executed based upon display rules. So this feature is very experimental and it's quite rough around the edges. Let me show you. So I have it enabled and when I hover over Elementor, there's a new option here that says custom code. And you can see I added a custom code snippet right here. Now, like I said, it's very rough around the edges. Let me just show you. You click on new code, give it a title, paste your code in, choose your location, head uh, body start or body end, place a priority. Now, you, at first glance, you're like, uh, this is pretty basic. Where's the display conditions? And they kind of scrunched it in over here on the right. And it's actually kind of funky the way it works. See there, I clicked on that. And this must be some styling issue and this will get improved. Uh, but right here, it lets me know that I can add conditions, but it's like, doesn't really work that great. So if I wanted it to be on the entire website or just singular pages, archives, I can do this here. So it'd be nice. I'm sure they're gonna improve this user interface for applying the rules. Uh, I do think it's great that they are adding this though, and it really gives some indication of where Elementor is heading in 2021, which I'll talk about at the end of the video. But this is a much welcomed enhancement, if you ask me. Now the sixth improvement is to Elementor and Elementor Pro, and it's fundamental improvements in performance. And so what the line, the improvement, like what they're saying about it is certain assets will load only if that widget is being used on that page. And this is very much welcomed. And there's also some improvements to the DOM output. Now, what that means is the code that gets generated by Elementor will be a little bit more condensed. So when they announced this, they gave some instructions on how to test it. And I tried to set up my own test environment. So let me show you uh, what I am seeing and um, you can see if you feel like there's an improvement there for you. So here's a website and you know what I'm going to do is put the URLs to the the both of these sites in the video description and it will only be up for maybe like a week or two and I'll probably take these sites completely down. But this would allow you to do your own test, okay? So uh, here we are, both sites are identical. This is Elementor Current and it's running the current version of Elementor. In fact, here it is, it's Elementor 3.0.16 and the plugins that are active on both sites are identical. So I've got the current version of Elementor. I have a plugin called Cadence Starter Templates. It's what generated this entire website with one mouse click. And I'm also running WooCommerce because it's part of this site template. Now it also uses Fluent Forms to generate a contact form, which I have deactivated. And this is the beta version of Elementor with these improvements. And I followed their instructions of editing the page, adding something, uh, saving it, and all that kind of stuff. So here is 
Elementor 3.1, and you can see the title is right here. And this is a full page, you know. Uh, we've got a kind of a nice call to action here in the, in the header. We've got lots of images. There's, I mean, this is a very nice design, full web page that would be kind of a typical web page. And it's also running WooCommerce. But here, so you can see the exact plugins that are on it. When I ran the speed test, I had Elementor Pro deactivated. So I'll leave from now, and, and if you want to test it, you're Yourself, I'll leave Elementor Pro deactivated. And so we have the same plugins installed. Uh, we have Elementor. Uh, this doesn't load anything on the front end, the, the Elementor beta. And then we have Cadence Starter Templates and we have WooCommerce. So it's the same exact thing that is loaded up. So let me show you the GT Metrics results that it showed me. So first, what we have here is the current and you can see in the little thumbnail here it says elementor current and uh we can this is the new gt metrics layout i should make a video on this uh, but we have our little stats here this is what i think really matters but this can change from test to test now i use good hosting and the theme i'm using the cadence theme is a really speed optimized theme so it doesn't surprise me that despite having woocommerce elementor full page uh, uh, I'm getting really good load time speeds uh, for this this version of Elementor, the current version of Elementor. So when we look here, we're getting some information. You can see right here the TTFB time to first byte. It's uh, pretty good there. So anyways, uh, first content painful. What really matters is time to interactive. So at 1.4 seconds in, the website visitor could start interacting with this, the website and it was fully loaded at 1.7 seconds. Now, I don't know if there's a problem in my testing method. Uh, down here, we can see the page details and we can see the total page size, uh, 1.57. Now that is mostly images, okay? But we have requests, uh, 78 different requests. So that's what we have on this site. Let's go ahead and take a look at the beta version, which supposedly has some improvements of speed and all that kind of stuff. And so we're not really seeing much of a change at all. So it's still loading really fast. There was a little bit of an improvement here for the time, uh, the total blocking time. You can see it was went from 90 milliseconds down to uh, 53. Uh, but I think all these uh, change a little bit each time you test it. This has a fully loaded time of this, the same time, 1.7 seconds. The TTI was just a slight bit faster in this particular test, but we're we're seeing extra requests and we're seeing, you know, just a little bit more in the total page size. So either the improvements they make are not that significant or there's something messed up in the way that I ended up testing it. Now, if you ask 10 different people, they're all gonna have 10 different opinions related to Elementor and speed. You have some people that are really frustrated by it and then you've got some people that it doesn't bother them because they know how to speed optimize it. So despite how efficient or inefficient your builder are is, um, it could just mean you have to put a little bit more effort to speed optimize it. I don't particularly have an opinion either way. I know that some of the highest ranking websites, if you throw their, their link to their website in GT metrics, it's horrendous. We're talking like four, five, six second load time, yet these are top ranking pages, top ranking ranking websites and Google has no problem suggesting them. But all that aside, I do think performance and efficiency and the output of the code is super important. And I do think that Elementor needs to work on it even more. Okay, so now we're off to the last improvement and uh, this came as a very nice surprise. I can put a link to this down below, but Elementor is adding some transparency about their support. Now, if you tried to to reach out to them for support in 2020, you might have had to wait uh, such a long time that it was extremely, extremely frustrating. That actually happened to me. I, for the first time in probably a year and a half, had to ask for support through their ticket desk and it took about seven or eight days for them to respond to me which was, it was what it was, how let's just put it put it that way. Uh, but it was a bit disheartening. So anyways, this is um, the new head of support adding some transparency and it's quite shocking. They get right here, so 
So it says that they, oops, I'm getting a little pop up. It says that they doubled their team, their support team, and that right now they're getting 30,000 support requests, support tickets, or more than that each and every month. And they now have 70 people that are working those tickets. So I do cut Elementor Slack in their poor support desk. And it's not that they want to offer poor support. It's more like they've scaled, they've grown so big, it's hard to scale at the same pace of it. And so, I mean, it stinks. And, uh, you know, not to make an excuse for them, uh, but I don't think they desire to, or the, and they don't, it's not that they have a lack of resources providing great support. Uh, so it looks like they've doubled their support staff, crazy numbers of support tickets. They're going to support it. They're going to expand it further, but they invested in a more efficient uh, help desk software so that they can do a better job of supporting customers that need that help. I gotta say, when I had that support experience with Elementor, probably in March, it did give me, and this is when Elementor version three came out, it did cause me to pause a little bit on Elementor. And that's why you didn't see a lot of Elementor related stuff from me in 2020. And that's why I had to pause because ultimately, if I uh, recommend something and it produces a bad experience, I feel personally responsible to you, the subscriber or viewer of this channel. So I'm very careful. I don't just, you know, talk about any old random product that might be here today and gone tomorrow. I've been doing this WordPress thing for a very long time. And so, especially here on the channel, I am ultra careful because I don't want to lead anyone that watches these videos in the wrong direction, in the wrong path. I don't want anyone that watches these to have a bad experience with any of the stuff that I end up talking about. And because of that, I am feel more restricted on what I'll even talk about here on the channel because I don't want you to end up having a bad experience. So if I have a bad experience, I'm just not going to talk about it because I don't want that to spill on over into you. And I think over the past few years, I've done a pretty good, consistent job of picking the best tools and services to help you grow your business online. So those are the seven improvements, seven improvements uh, that are coming very soon to Elementor. And I know a lot of you are going to be disappointed as it relates to performance. We can only hope that they put a higher priority on that or continue placing a high priority on that. And the other big one that people want is custom breakpoints, uh, that they'll continue to put a high priority on that and actually start showing some results in Elementor. I'm sure we would all love that. Hey, can you help me get the word out on this video? Please give it a thumbs up right now. I could use that. If you're not subscribed, I invite you to subscribe. If you have any questions or want to talk further about this, we got that comment section down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.